Hey booktube, it's Samantha and I know I haven't posted in a week. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was reading and then I got my hair done, as you can tell, and then four more days happened. <laughs> uh, I did try recording something on Thursday and when I recorded it, I just did not feel like it was up to par with what I wanted to put out there so I figured to scratch it and I would just wait until the weekend so here we are and I'm doing another TBR of the week I am really liking this so far we'll see how it goes over the course of the next couple months or so but I do like not having the pressure of reading all these books in a month when my reading taste change so much in a month or at least not so much my taste but my mood for sure so I have this one hair sticking out and it's driving me nuts. This is a big week guys because I'm starting my job tomorrow and as I've mentioned a couple of times already I have to drive to Columbia which is a minimum hour and a half drive one way. So that's three hours of driving time tomorrow and I have to be there at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Uh, I've been like waking up at 8 a.m. So this is gonna be a rude awakening for me. <laughs> but I was planning on listening to Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson last week. I have not started it whatsoever. And the more I think about it, the more I really just want to purely read the hard copy of it. I, the thought of doing it on audiobook just isn't appealing to me right now. I am debating whether I want to listen to Priory of the Orange Tree on audiobook or not. The reason why I'm thinking about that is because I'm really enjoying the story. And if I can knock out a big chunk of this on audiobook tomorrow, then maybe it'll be easier to finish by the end of Tome Topple. That is something that is going on in my mind. I'm going to do a little check-in about this because... I am doing, I've been recording a vlog for this book. I've been doing an update about every 50 to 100 pages where I kind of just talk about what's going on in my feelings. Because every time that I saw a video talking about this book, all they would say is, oh, it's about dragons. It's a standalone fantasy novel. And it's like, well, but, but what is it about? Like, can you give me a little more? <laughs> So this is following a few different people. There's definitely different perspectives. It's not like the Lightbringer series where you're very distinctively following like three main characters from their points of view. This one is, there's more like, there's more like four to five and they're kind of all spread out over different parts of the world. Basically dragons are worshiped like in the East, which definitely has like a Japanese feel to it, but it's not, none of these are like strictly, oh, this is the Japan, this is uh, Russia, this is Africa, nothing like that. But there are some tendencies where it's like, okay, that feels like it has an air of this. And we're following one person over in the East who is trying to become a dragon rider. It's very privileged position to be in not everyone can be in it usually it's like a higher up like the wealthy but they're not necessarily wealthy they're wealthy because they're dragon riders and we're following someone who's like a peasant who is trying to become a dragon rider and then over on the west side we have differing levels going on there someone who used to like live in the south is now up in the north taking care of the queen of that island and the queen is thought to be like a saint because she's alive and every time she gives birth to a daughter it's because of that bloodline that the uh i think it's called the unnamed one is like the evil guy isn't coming back but there's kind of some qualms about if that's really what it is or if it's not so they're trying to figure out what to do with her she's not really wanting to get married but she's kind of in a position where things are starting to look a little dangerous and there's been some threats on her life and it's like well maybe you should get on that producing an heir in case you die 
Um, so we follow one of the people that's kind of trying to protect the queen. So that's an interesting perspective. And there's this whole cultural, religious aspect to it that is built into the story that I really enjoy. Uh, with that storyline, there's a little, little smidgen of magic. I mean, it's, it's really small. And then the best friend to the queen and this bodyguard, he was seen to be a little too close to the queen. And so he kind of got exiled out of the island and was sent to the place where the unnamed one is supposed to be. And it's supposed to be kind of like hell on earth kind of thing where if you go in there it's basically a death sentence and no one's ever come back alive so he's going in there he's going into enemy territory and he is just trying to get through it alive and get back home and he's figuring things out about the enemy which is really really interesting those are kind of the major plot points going on there's definitely smaller stuff going on throughout but i've been really enjoying this story i feel like it's really easy to follow i've been taking my time with reading it i definitely haven't been speed reading it so that i can understand all the characters and the places and whatnot so that's why <laughs> i know i did this whole long summary about the book well not summary but you know what i mean but the reason why is because i don't know whether i should keep reading the physical copy because in order for me to have a really good understanding of what's going on in the story and where everyone's at, I have been referencing this map a lot. Like the queen that I was referencing, she lives up here. And then the unnamed place, that evil place is right here. And where the bodyguard is from is down here. And then this is the land that's to the east. And mainly we've just been right here, but they've been referencing stuff on the um, coast too. And isn't that cool? I love drawings. But I've been referencing these maps a lot, so I'm a little worried about going into literally the next part of the book without an ability to reference those maps. So that's my only hesitancy about going into audiobook with this. And maybe I'll just start a different audiobook. I honestly haven't looked into anything. I've just been really focused on reading Priory of the Orange Tree because it's been so long since I've read fantasy that basically I was full up on my horror, full up on my thriller, loving that, feeling good, but fantasy was really, really low. So I'm just eating this up. I think this is the perfect time to pick this one up because I am thoroughly enjoying it. So. When it comes to TBR, it's really going to be mainly Priory of the Orange Tree. If you guys have any really good audiobook recommendations, let me know down below. Want it to be something that's engaging with the narrators being really good. I, if I can, I'll try and get Sleeping Giants. But if you can recommend something to me that's going to be available right now, there's some audiobooks where it's like, oh, this is really, really good, but I'm going to have to put it on hold for like three weeks. And that's not going to help me for tomorrow. <laughs> so if there's maybe an audiobook that isn't as well known that you think I would enjoy, let me know down below. And I will hopefully finish this book <laughs> this week since Tone Topple ends. Well, I think it's like technically like Friday at 11.59. So hopefully I'll finish that this week. Maybe get some reading done tonight. And otherwise, I'll see you later. Until next time. See ya.